This is Cheryl Moore, and you are listening to the Simply Jesus Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about how to lovingly introduce others to Jesus. So I have invited Chris Seedman, the pastor of The Branch, to help us figure out um, how we can change that. So welcome. I'm thrilled to be here. Thanks. Your you're very here. first guest. Yes, thank awesome. you. <laughs> um, so my question is, I love Jesus, and I think about him all the time, and he really is a big part of my life, but why am I not talking more about him? Why am I not bringing him up in conversation? And I thought you might have some insight into that or just from your experience of um, why people don't are not talking about him more in the you know on a daily basis. Well, I think, I mean, the answers could be varied from my, sure. as I reflect on my own life, uh, but just in my conversations with other people who are followers of Jesus. I think there are times when I think about, um, when I think about people who can't help but talk about something, uh, an example, uh, somebody who is in a multi-level marketing business. Right. You know, you will meet people who are in a multi-level marketing business who they can't help but talk about their business or their particular product um, because it is reality to them. Maybe it is that they have found blessing through it, they have made money through it, and they're excited. They're wanting to tell their friends or people they care about something that has make, made a pragmatic difference in their life. I think the same way with, you know, people get get excited about things that have changed their lives or affected their lives. If you think about somebody that's on an eating regimen and they've experienced benefit of losing 12 pounds and they feel better, they sleep better, they can't help but talk about it. And I think there is something about that. Even in the Bible, you'll find times when people are talking about, um, we can't help but speak about what we've seen and heard. That's what uh, Peter and John say, I believe in Acts chapter 4, um, that uh, Paul says, I believe, therefore I have spoken, 2 Corinthians 4. So there's something to, when we're in a stretch, I think when Jesus seems real to us, when we have tasted of the benefits of walking with him, it it the the gap gets shrunk a little bit more between um, our private life with Jesus mm. and our public life with Jesus. Right. Where we can't help but talk about what we've seen or what we've heard. So I think that's one thing, you know, is that if, you know, I think about John in 1 John 1, 1, he said, that which I've seen, which I've touched, which I've heard, this I proclaim concerning the word of life, which I think is a great point, by the way, about what does it mean to tell somebody about Jesus, it, it's it's sometimes it is reflecting on your own experience. Sometimes and that leads me to something else. Some people don't want to say anything about Jesus because they're afraid, well, I'm afraid I'm going to get a conversation started, and then I'm going to get asked a question that I can't answer. That's going to happen. I mean, even I go through stretches where I say, I don't know. Um, I think about the man in John chapter 9 who was blind, but now he sees after Jesus heals him, and the religious leaders interrogate the man. And of course, they're after Jesus, and they start interrogating man about, tell me about this man who healed you. You know, is he a sinner? And the the blind, the man once blind has this incredible response around verse 25 of John 9, where he says, listen, whether this man was a sinner or not, I don't know. This guy didn't even know if Jesus was a sinner or not. Wow. I mean, he doesn't even have a fundamental doctrine about the Messiah down yet. Right. But then he says, but uh, but this I do know. I once was blind, but now I see. So I like to tell people, and I have to remind myself, don't let what you don't know keep you from sharing what you do know. Right. Yeah. That's and so I think in in answer to why don't we share, sometimes it's a matter of we're we haven't had a fresh experience of the awareness of Jesus, the reality of Jesus recently that is more quickly on our tongue to talk about, quite frankly. Sometimes it's we're paralyzed with fear that we don't know enough. So we let what we don't know keep us from sharing what we do know. Mm, right. Um, there's all kinds of reasons. Sometimes, and this is tied to, we don't, we don't have a burden for for others who may not know the Lord. Right. 
Um, and when Jesus looked on the lost in Matthew chapter 9, 35 through 38, it says he saw, he looked out and he saw people as harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd, and felt compassion for them. He that word compassion is is a big word, especially for Jews like Jesus. You know, the word for compassion, um, Rahamim, it, it comes from the word for womb. And the idea was the way a woman suffers with the child within her, say if the child is in jeopardy or there's a potential miscarriage, you think about the grief a woman enters into because there's an umbilical cord between her and the baby within her. Right. That's that image behind compassion, this idea of, of boy, there's this connection where the Lord is suffering with those who are suffering. They're without a shepherd, and he... He feels compassion for them. And I think sometimes we lack a burden right. to share because we're we're out of touch in many ways with uh, the lost state of someone. And maybe we ourselves are kind of numb. Right. It reminds me that, that I should probably be praying more that the Holy Spirit would show me um, – my friends or the people I come in contact with on a daily yeah. basis, how he sees them so that I could have that compassion for them. Absolutely. You know, to have a better idea of um, what they need. Because I think I need to have a whole speech ready. And like you said, it's it's um, it's possible that I, I just need to be listening to the Holy Spirit because maybe they just need a prayer and maybe they just right. need a hug, but maybe they need the hope of the name of Jesus. I don't really know, but if I'm more conscious that the Holy Spirit's going to do it and I don't have to come up with something, maybe that will oh. free me up to speak, you know, just to take a moment and to say even a quick little prayer and then to approach somebody with um, with his words and maybe not mine. Well, and I think that's huge, too, that I think it helps for us to remember we're never starting at square one with somebody. Okay. Um, that we have to keep keep in mind that the Lord is pursuing people and is at work in people's lives. You think about Acts 17, where Paul or Mars Hill says that God determines times in people's lives and the places where people live so that people would seek, reach out for him, seek him, and find him, though he's not far from each one of them. So he's at work in people's lives, and I'm never truly starting at square one with somebody. Um, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 3, you know, one person waters. Uh, one person sows a seed, another person waters. Um, I think about Acts 8, that's a great example of the, you know, the Ethiopian eunuch, he's in a chariot reading the scroll of Isaiah. Right. Philip is minding his own business, and the Lord says to Philip, go over to that chariot. And so Philip goes over there, and he begins where the eunuch is. He's like, hey, what you reading? Right. And the eunuch is like, he was reading out of Isaiah 53, but he didn't understand what it was he was reading. And he just engaged Philip there. And Philip started there and took him to Jesus. So I think you're exactly right about, Lord, open my eyes. Help me to see people. Help me to see where you are at work, that I can step into it. You know, this the whole idea of sharing your faith or putting uh, testifying to Jesus— Everybody wants it to be like making tacos at Taco Bell. We do right. the same format, <laughs> and then the same thing works for everybody, and yes. it's just not so. Yeah, every every person is more handmade by the Lord than mass produced. Right, right. And so, when you look at how Jesus took people and where He met people at, whether it's people fishing, and He's calling them to follow Him, and He says make you fishers of men. He says that to fishermen. Or to a woman who's gathering water at a well in a dry and arid desert, he speaks of living water. Right. Um, I, I think yeah. there are... So I think you're exactly right about, you know, Lord, help me open my eyes. Help me to see people the way you see. I want to feel your burden for people. Open my eyes to see where there's an open door with someone. Mm-hmm. You know, Paul prays in Colossians 4 and 2, he says, he says, um, pray that God would open a door for me to proclaim the message, and then pray for me to proclaim it clearly, and then pray for me to have boldness. There's three things wow. to pray for, right. where you're praying for an open door, pray for God to help me to say something clearly, right? 
uh, and then give me courage. Because sometimes God opens the doors and we don't have the courage to walk through them. Right. So there's opportunity, there's clarity, there's courage, good, solid biblical things to pray for for those moments. That, that feels like I'd need to just be more intentional, right? Mm-hmm. That if I can just wake up and have the intentionality of, I do want to meet somebody today and I want the boldness and an open door and clarity, mm-hmm. um, but I need to prep myself a little bit, right? I need to make right. sure that I'm I'm ready for that day, but um, asking the Lord to help me through that. And then I think if I can if I can wake up and say that prayer, then I'm gonna my eyes are gonna be more open, right? I'm gonna be more paying oh. attention to more people around me to see what God is doing. Absolutely, and to help you know, and and to help even think through it from another from a perspective of the Bible. You think about Jesus in Matthew 28. When he says, go into all the world and make disciples, and we that's what it says in the English, but really the idea is literally in the Greek, it's make disciples as you go along. A lot of people yes. think Matthew 28 is go into all the world. It's just a deal for international missionaries. But really, it, it's more about living with intention than even going to a certain location. Right. It's about being intention intentional where you are, making disciples as you go along. Somebody's taught me a ton about this as my wife. Tara, um, she, for many, many years, now she's in a season of working on her house, but for eight or nine years, she went to a gym in our area, and she'd post up on the elliptical, and she's very gregarious. She just talked to everybody at 5.30 in the morning when they came through, and of course, not everybody's very talkative, but they couldn't help but notice her smiling, and she became like the Pope of that gym almost, with people just talking about their lives, and she would talk to them. Well, I started going to the gym and I started meeting these people through her. And uh, eventually doors open for us to talk about things that matter over time. Wow. And now one of those people who we met at the gym 11 years later is an elder at our church. Oh, that's fabulous. You know, and then it, same thing in our neighborhood, you know, across the, we had a couple move across the street a few years ago. She's Jewish, grew up in California. Uh, early 50s. Her husband is from Europe. He's a professional chef. Um, And Tara was out in the front yard with him one day and just invited him to our Christmas candlelight service. And she said, well, I'm Jewish. And I came out and I said, that's okay. I follow one too. His name is Jesus. And so we had a good laugh. She understood that. They started coming. Right. And, uh, and we started having dinner with them around our table. Wow. So it's, that's... And it just kind of morphed from right. there. Mm-hmm. And all the a few couple years later, she she made the decision to follow Yeshua. We baptized her in a swimming pool in our neighborhood. So that's it's so much about living with intention. Right. Um when I was praying about this last night, I felt like the Lord was reminding me to to be the light like you said with mm-hmm. Tara, that part of it is your lifestyle. It's about talking talking about positive things, right? right? And bringing some kind of hope to people. But the verse he gave me um was John 1:5. And so we know it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God, which is Jesus, right? And that um, in him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind, Mm -hmm. and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness had not overcome it. And so I felt the Lord reminding me that the name of Jesus is so powerful, and that it is light, that, that says that the light shines in the darkness. And so sometimes just bringing up the name of Jesus in a conversation, I think, um, will go further than we think, you know, yeah. because we are we're trying to rely on maybe our words or saying the right thing. But um, gee, I feel like his name is so much more powerful than we realize. Yes. Bringing it up in a conversation could do more than we could kind of possibly hope or imagine because he is so powerful. Um, and I think it's just bigger than maybe what we are trying to say. His name is. Does Absolutely. That I think that's, I mean, like just the name of Jesus is power at the right. name of Jesus. And by the way, you know, sometimes, you know, we talk about inviting people to church and that can be one way of getting a conversation going. Some people are open and hungry. Other people aren't to that, but kind of because I'm a pastor, people would expect me to invite them to church. I've kind of slow played excuse me, that. And I've spent more energy when doors open talking about just Jesus. Wow. I mean, that, that, that's, you know, church obviously is important. 
given what I do, because it provides a community and a lot of resources, but but getting Jesus out on the front end and putting in a good word for Jesus right. um, is so key. And that and there's there's power in his name, no doubt. Yeah. And I think we feel like we have to have the the whole salvation story kind of set up, which I think we need to know right. and be able to um, verbalize. But like you said, I think sometimes just putting in a good word for him and just telling them, this is what Jesus did for me. This is yes. how I view Jesus. And even if we leave some, um, maybe they're unclear about all the things, then that's okay, right? right? Like you said, we just do our part. We just plant our seed. And maybe they just need to hear something really good about who Jesus is. Absolutely. And you know, I think too, realizing we don't have to be at at every... Uh, letter in the alphabet of somebody's journey with Jesus from A to Z. It, it's yeah. it's putting in a good word, living intentionally where we are with them. As I look back on my life now, um, you know, I I can I can. There's somebody in my life who I met on a golf course 18 years ago, who came to Jesus three years after I met him. There's somebody in my life in my neighborhood who came to Jesus a couple of years. There's somebody in our life who from our gym. Um, and and sometimes, so I want to be real clear to say when I tell these stories, and we have a very short podcast here, it's not like things are happening instantly. It's over time. And there were other people I've put in a good word for Jesus. I don't know what happened to them. Right. You know, I kind of, I view us as we're the male people. We just... We're delivering the mail. Yeah. We can't be, make people read the mail. We can't make people do what it says on the letter to do, but we can deliver the mail. Right. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah. good. Okay, well, I think um, I think those, that's a lot of good ideas. And so I, what I want to do is kind of have a call to action for our listeners mm -hmm. and to ask them. So this is what I'm going to do tomorrow, right? I'm going to get up in the morning and I'm going to try to... I will. I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to show yes. me some open doors, um, some boldness. What else she said? Some clarity. Yeah. Um, but it, just at least try to speak the name of Jesus in a conversation with Absolutely. somebody that doesn't know them. Because um, I do that easily with others that know Jesus. Yeah. But I, I know I'm not doing that very well or at all um, with with people that are not familiar with Jesus. So that's kind of the call to action that I want to have. I for love it. Our listeners. And um, to do that and then to let us know. And so you can put it in the comments or yes. um, however you're you're looking at the viewing the podcast. But And, I, and let me help ahead. you out here. Yeah. I think it's good to let us know stories, to let you know yes. stories that... It didn't quite work out, or right. nothing happened, or yeah. sometimes funny stuff happens. Sure, the That's Lord great. has a way of redeeming things over time. Great, yeah, and yeah. and it is to His pleasure, it's to the Spirit's pleasure that Jesus be brought up. Right, nobody is more excited about Jesus than the Spirit of God. Right, who yes. points to Christ yeah. and creates doors, and so That's we are great. not in this alone when we're having coffee with somebody or playing golf with somebody or working out with somebody or on a walk with somebody, we're not in this alone. And by the way, sometimes we don't need to get real fractured or uptight about, you know, what kind of history does this person have with the church? There are plenty of people who are associated with the church who may not really know Jesus. Right. You know, this yeah. is this is about helping people to grow uh, as a follower of Jesus from wherever point they are. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. yeah. And I think for me too, I, um, like you said, it's not so much about the end result. I think the Lord is just asking us to step out in faith right? and just to bring it up and to get in a habit of bring it up. And, yes. And I think that's, um, there's a lot of, um, I don't want to say glory, what's the word? I just think that there's a lot of gladness on the Lord's part, right? If we can just be, have some faith and just Absolutely. start mentioning the name of Jesus. Yes. Okay, well, great. Well, as we um, as we leave, will you pray a blessing over sure. our listeners? I would um, love to. And just kind of maybe impart some boldness and courage Absolutely. for them. Yeah, thank Amen. you. Amen. Lord, I just, uh, I'm grateful for this time. I know you're pleased by this subject that you long, your word says, according to 1 Timothy 2, you long for everyone to come to a knowledge of the truth who is Jesus Christ. You long for that. And so 
I know a lot of times I'm praying because I don't know your will and I'm seeking your will out. But this case, we know your will. Your will is for people to know your son, Jesus. And right now we're praying in accordance with that. Lord, I just, first of all, just pray that you would increase our burden for people who don't know you. Lord, will you increase our burden? I ask for the gift of tears to visit those of us who've never been burdened to the point of tears for the condition of people spiritually. We ask for the gift of tears, Lord. We ask for the burden. And Lord, while we're at it, we ask for eyes to see them the way you see them. We ask, Lord, for you to help us to recognize the doors that you're swinging wide open on the hinges of circumstances at times. That gives us an opportunity to be explicit about the name of Jesus. To put in a good word for Jesus. Lord, we, we ask that you would set us free from the illusion that we have to have all the answers before we open up our mouth. In fact, Lord, I'm thinking right now about 1 Peter 3, which says to be prepared to give an answer as to the reason for the hope that you have. That, that you just assume we are living in such a way that it will provoke questions. We ask for the power of your Spirit to be at work in our life, that we would live in such a way that it would just provoke questions. Lord, we know um, oftentimes the times when people ask questions are when they observe how we're acting in adversity. So, Lord, we pray for the reality of your presence and that your light would shine in us when we are in adverse circumstances. In fact, Lord, we know your light really is shines more brightly in darkness. So to the extent that some of us are in adverse circumstances right now, we pray your light shines in such a way that it would provoke questions for why are we handling things the way we are? Why are we coping the way we are? How are we doing it? And that we would be able to see that as an opportunity to put in a good word for you, Jesus. Lord, we pray for the gift of courage, the gift of clarity. I pray John 12, 49 over us. Um, which says, my Father teaches me what to say and how to say it. Lord, will you teach us what to say and how to say it? Lord, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit that um, Jesus told his own disciples that um, they would not need to worry always about what to say when being questioned, but that the Spirit would give them content to say. So we look with eager anticipation for the way you're going to fill our mouths when we open them. Hmm. Lord, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your goodness. We long to have the eyes of Jesus who said, my father is always at work and I only do what I see my father doing. Lord, help us to see what you're doing every day in the lives of people you're pursuing. We want to join in on it. And help us to see all the ways you are at work in our life that we might be able to point to, not pointing to us, but pointing to you and your goodness and redeeming power. Lord, we bless your name. Loosen our tongues. Free our hearts. Lord, open our eyes. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Amen.